Yo, y'all. All right, so I want to go on a trip to the mid-80s here and do uh, review a little um, movie I grew up personally since I was like in fourth and fifth grade. Fifth grade especially, I ran this like religiously back in 91 and 1992. And it was a favorite of mine. It's very underrated, but also it's kind of regarded as one of the not-so-great sequels of this franchise. But hey, you know what? I'm about to lay out the law of why I like it. So that's all it's going to be. And the film in question is going to be the very vastly underrated and fun Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2 Freddy's Revenge. All right, you got the original post art cover here from the DVD box set. And then the also, which I think is a badass original VHS uh, cover right here that I've always loved. All right. All right. So, yeah, with that said, okay, <laughs> this movie here, you know, yeah, it's, it's not without its share of faults and problems, but you know what? You know, a lot of movies back then had those, and uh, definitely a lot of movies now have them more. But, but this movie is very... It's it's a fun, you know, little gem from the 80s, you know, and it did something different. Like, um, a lot of people, and I can understand why people didn't like it, the, the, the way the story and the route went after the very uh, su superior first Nightmare on Elm Street, because that movie is, let's be honest, is a superior horror film. Um, but this went the possession route, you know. Jesse and his family move into the 1428 Elm Street house that uh, was once inhabited by the Thompsons, you know, Nancy Thompson, the heroine of the very first one. Um, finds her diary up in his uh, not in his bedroom now, that used to be her bedroom, up in the closet, detailing about a lot of her uh, issues she grew, you know, she had with uh, Freddy and her friends dying and going crazy. And um, around that same time, he meets this new girl, um, played by Kim Myers, um, you know, that's like, uh, his crush or whatnot in the school, and, uh, he begins to start, things around the house start kind of going a little haywire, you know, it starts kind of having the haunted house theme to it, you know, you have, um, a, like the house burning up very hot, you have him having wicked nightmare dreams, you have, like, uh, parakeets going, you know, berserk in the family room and exploding in the midair. You know, you just, you got toasters that, you know, that turn on and shit. You know, you just got all these weird little, you know, poltergeist type things going on. And then, you know, of course, there's Freddy in the Nightmare World. And he's trying to cross over to our world in this one, you know. So this one kind of broke the chain of rule from that was set in the very first one. And um, he's trying to cross over to our world, and in doing so, he's going to possess... The male body of Jesse that now is inhabiting this house with his family. And <clears throat> so that's the plot of this one. And it's about pretty much Jesse trying to stop it before it gets too worse after a lot of the other murders going on. And the girlfriend stepping in and trying to help and do something about it. But this movie's got so much cool little things in it. You know, not only is it just, it's a time capsule of the 80s. Let me tell you, you know, hairspray feather bangs, you know, big hair, style, music, all that. But the music in this movie rocks. Especially uh, during the pool scene with uh, Bobby Orlando. But, uh, you know, you got some other uh, funny numbers in there. Especially with this uh, funny routine of um, Jesse dancing around his bedroom while unpacking uh, to a song that sounds very awfully kind of like a version of um, Phil Collins or something. I don't even remember. But, yeah, no, no. And um, I'm going to go to some other details about this movie, you know. And uh, the, the white elephant in the room is going to be... Um, the fact that this movie is very, very painfully homoerotic, or just got a lot of gay, uh, overtones, undertones, whatnot. Um, sorry. Ugh. Okay, so, this movie has, you know, murder, death, killing, and it's got body counts, you know, you got, um, you got d different characters that select, uh, get it murdered off, and it's, it's Jesse doing it, and he's not realizing he's doing it, so when he wakes up, he's got the glove on, and blood, um, he's doing, he's starting, his, his behavior becomes erratic, you know, he's, he starts leaving, he starts going to his sister room, watching her while she sleeps, you know, having the inkling to kill her, he's starting to, you know, defy his father, um, and, uh, who's played by the awesome Clue Gallagher of, uh, Return of the Living Dead and Feast and, uh, you know, several other films out there, oh, and, um, The Initiation, uh, anyway, um, so, and he starts, like, you know, leaving the house at night and stuff, you know. At one point, you know, um, he, you know, is caught, you know, walking around naked and came uh, patrolled back to the house by the cops and stuff. So he's being very increasingly weird, you know. And, again, it's all because of Freddy Krueger trying to take over that man's body. And uh, speaking of bodies, this movie is full of them. <laughs> you know, uh, everything from the, like I said, the kind of homo, overly homoerotic kind of, 
you know, uh, tone to it, uh, down to the pool party scene, which is fucking badass when Freddy, you know, kind of uh, jumps into the party and stuff and starts massacring people at this uh, pool party at his uh, Jesse's girlfriend's house that she's throwing. Anyhow, but, um, yeah, this movie boasts some really cre awesome special effects. I think I knew when I was a kid in fifth grade, like, some of the special effects in this movie, I was just like, oh my fucking god, that's awesome. Number one, when uh, Jesse's being, like, when Freddy's officially, and as a viewer, you're seeing Freddy officially and see how the process goes of how Freddy officially comes out of Jesse's body. It's fucking badass. And he's stuck in the bedroom with uh, what is considered, I guess, his friend in school, but also kind of a rival bully. I, I, I kind of don't understand that. They're friends, but they give each other a hard time. Um, um, uh, anyway, but yeah, no, so... Um, He's in his bedroom, stuck with him while the, his friend is trying to sleep, all you know, half naked. And uh, the knives come out of his fingers, and his fingers uh, rips open, and you can see the sweater, you know, sweater underneath it. No glove, just the knives through the fingers. And then you know, uh, Freddy's face comes out through the chest, and he cuts it and just rips all of his body. And it's a fucking awesome effect. Um, well done, well done. Um, you know, you get like dogs with fucking human baby faces on them. You get like these uh, possessed rats. You know, you get uh, the possessed parakeet, you know. You get just, like, awesome shit going on in this movie that's just fucking way bizarre. But, you know what, it works. And, you know, it's like they just kind of decide to throw it at the wall and see what sticks. And it stuck to me, you know. I mean, as a kid, it entertained me, you know. Um, the movie, uh, like I said, it deviates a lot from the uh, rules set up in the original first 1984 Nightmare on Elm Street. But, you know, again, this movie was just kind of a beast of its own nature. And, uh, you know, like I said, the, a lot of the great set pieces were awesome. You know, uh, uh, everything from the, the possession scene of him coming out of uh, Jesse, right down to, uh, say, the pool party massacre scene where Freddy comes out. And dare I even say that Kevin Yeager's uh, makeup for Freddy Krueger in this one was pretty d downright scary. Like, he looked like a fucking witch, like with the hook nose and the big fucking eyes and shit. And then the, the Nash teeth, like, he was scary looking in this one, you know. Um, there's no denying that, and that's just my opinion. Um, also, he still was not the humorous, the humorous Freddy he became, or what was set in motion in part three and part four, you know, which was, which is also a very welcome, welcome aspect to it. He wasn't that humorous. He was still kind of a sinister character. And also, you know, as a kid when I watched this movie and it scared me, I was fucking scared to ride the bus, school bus home many a days because of this movie this movie right here scared me so much with the school bus because everybody knows this at the beginning of this movie when jesse's having his first nightmare after moving in it is on the school bus from home coming home from school and uh it's just him and the last two girls left picking on him on the bus and uh freddy's the driver and drives the miss it goes past her stop and drives out into the fucking um out to the like fields and stuff, the desert, and uh, the ground starts like caving in and stuff, and they're just stuck on like these little uh, pillars of uh, sand, dirt, you know, of rock, and uh, the bus is like swaying back and forth. <clears throat> that scared me as a kid. There was many times on the bus, you know, I was always so scared that the bus would go zoom, you know, past my stop, and I, you know, either me or the one of the other uh, people on the bus would be all, driver, that's our stop, driver, that's our stop. Anyway, but anyway, but no, no. This movie has some awesome, weird set pieces in it. And it was just, you know, come on, Al. It's a fucking badass movie, you know? I mean, so the special effects were cool. You had some cool, recognizable actors in it. You know, again, you know, you have the actor. I can't think of his name right now, so I do apologize. But uh, the one that plays Jesse's friend, but also slash bully. They get in fights and stuff, but they're, they're buddies. Um, you know, he's in uh, Weird Science and uh, Vamp and, you know, whatnot. He's a cool, you know, he's a cool cat in this. And, uh... Um, you have uh, Fer Ferris Bueller's dad in this, who plays uh, that guy's dad. You have, um, you know, Clue Gallagher. You know, you just have an uh, assortment of uh, characters in this that are pretty cool. But, um, well, I'll say is this, this is as good as the original. Uh, scare tactic-wise, scare-wise, no. This movie's really not particularly scary, except for Freddy's makeup and stuff like that. He looks creepy in this as hell. But, um... Other than that, it's just a fun 80s gem, man. The special, uh, special effects extravaganza, a cool possession flick that's not really too possession flick because, you know, honestly, I'm not really into the pose religious possession flicks. They don't scare me because I'm not really too religious. But uh, this is not just, this is not the typical possession by a spirit or a demon or whatever. This is by a fucking monster, a movie monster, and that's Freddy Krueger, you know, you can't go wrong with that, so it's really fucking cool, and I, you know, I highly recommend this one, give it a check out if you ever do, and, uh, oh, yeah, one more thing, 
this movie does have a lot of gay over undertones, whatnot. Um, at the time when they made this, they said, oh, we had no clue that there was all that in there. It was like, oh, it's pretty evident and obvious. Um, you know, Jesse is, you know, he, uh, Mark Patton, who played him, you know, he is a, a, a gay man, so, but I mean, he did a pretty decent job, you know, not being too overly, you know, gay. However, um, you know, there's a lot of shots of him sweating in his bed and glistening in his underwear. And then there's the shots of, you know, oh, and there's the scene where he goes into that, I guess, what's a gay bar? A tranny bar? I don't even know what it is. It's like a punk bar, but there's a lot of, there's men making out men, and there's many like, women, there's a lot of leather, and it's something. <laughs> it's, all, it's something strange. That's all I know. And he gets found there by his uh, bull, kind of like uh, mean at heart ass of a, a PE coach, and his PE coach takes him back to the school in the middle of the night to make him run laps and then take a shower, which in turn makes, you know, him, the Freddy, come out and murder him in the showers by tying him up very S&M like with slapping his ass with bare ass with tiles. And, you know, all this stuff is just very bizarre. And um, the whole scene in uh, Grady, that's the friend's name, Grady. He's in Grady's room at night. And he's talking about how there's something deep inside him. He's like, there's something inside me that's trying to come out. And I need help. I need your help, you know. And Grady's like half naked, you know, glistening in sweat as well. And it's just it's just a very, you know, it has all these like kind of representations. And again, that could be a lot of people reading into it. That could have been me reading into it. But again, it's kind of, it's too hard not to acknowledge, you know. It's a little too... Or, yeah, it's a little too hard to not to acknowledge that. But, uh, anyway. Oh, yeah, and then, you know, uh, you know, Jesse conquers Freddy with, uh, accepting, uh, I guess the love and kiss of, uh, his girlfriend and stuff. And it's just kind of interesting. <laughs> but, anyway, aside from all that, this movie is a fun special effects movie. It's got some cool shit in it. It's got some cool set pieces. Everything from the pool party massacre to Freddy ripping out of Jesse's body to the school bus in the very beginning scene and some random nightmares and stuff like that. And just the connections to the original, the first one with the 1428 house Elm Street and as well as Nancy's diary and going back to the boiling room factory that they, you know, that was shut down. It's cool, you know, so you can't go wrong with it. So definitely check out A Nightmare on Elm Street, Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. And that is the uh, original cover right there, poster, and this is the VHS cover that I absolutely love, too. Anyways, I'm out. That's my review on that. Peace.